Welcome back. We got an email from a viewer who says Monroe is booming and invited us to come check it out. So we did. Located about an hour outside of Detroit, the city of Monroe is home to about 20,000 people who are passionate about their city's close-knit family feel. I love my baking, my family, my grandkids, uh, my vendor family. We're, we're all close-knit. Everybody wants to help each other out. It's a nice, nice town to live in. Doug Russo and Denise Willis oversee the city of Monroe's Farmer's Market. The market's fun atmosphere and community feel have been a central gathering spot for Monroe residents and visitors for more than 93 years. Patrons and vendors alike are happy to be a part of a market community with such high quality product offerings and even better people. We've uh, developed a product line. We've got lip balm, we make uh, soaps. We make a hand salve, some beard balms. My wife works here in Monroe, and uh, we do most of our shopping here in Monroe. It's a little bit larger, but it, it, you still get that small town feel. The produce is second to none. Um, we've got some great jewelry makers. We sell vintage items and antique items. We've got photography. We've got handmade items. Jeffrey Albergo, a Monroe resident since 2000, dedicates most of his free time to studying this history and documenting it through his photography while also capturing the city's surprisingly diverse wildlife. And what's really cool about Monroe is there's history on every corner. The Battle of 1812, a uh, river raisin national battlefield that's here. We have one of the, probably one of the best African-American painters, uh, Robert Duncanson, who lived here from 1821 until 1872 when he passed away. From antique stores, small shops carrying novelty items, to the Labor History Museum and even the scary Michigan Museum of Horror, the Monroe residents we spoke with recommend visiting a variety of places. Perhaps our favorite place to visit in the entire city is Scallywag's Dog Bakery. Yes, you heard that right, a dog bakery. We make very simple five, six ingredient treats, um, an array of different ones but they're all healthier and they will expire. So they're good for the dog. They're not full of preservatives. We have the greatest customers there are and they're always here to take care of us, help us out. On top of being unique, Monroe's businesses are also philanthropic. There's no better example of this than Amaya's, the city's most popular Mexican restaurant. Amaya's owner, Tino Amaya, sent two trucks full of relief supplies and food to those who were impacted by Hurricane Milton in early October. Tino grew up in Ohio, but is thankful for how Monroe has embraced him and his family. I'm a transplant to Monroe, but the city just embraced me and my family, and uh, it's just, it's, it's been uh, beautiful for us. I think it's a great city. I think we have the best citizens on the planet. I think there's a lot of great opportunity here for growth. Um, and I think now that we have some new leadership here downtown, there's some great opportunities uh, for uh, new businesses to really uh, get in and make a mark. And the Monroe Farmers Market is tomorrow until noon. It's on East Willow Street, and this is their last weekend outside. After that, they're going to move inside.